Good morning, Grace Church. Listen, it is good to be online with you today. Um, Wherever you're at, will you invite the Lord into your time, into the space? So church, will you pray with me? Jesus, we give you everything this morning. God, we invite you into our space. Jesus, come have your way. Be glorified in everything, God, in every word that we sing, in every note that we sing, in praise to you. So Jesus, we give you glory. We worship you. And everybody said, amen. Come on, church.
God, we glorify your name, joy to the world. Emmanuel, God with us. God, we give you glory, we praise you. We glorify your name. So Jesus, be welcome. Be welcome in our hearts, in our mind, in our soul, God. You can have it all, Jesus. God, you can have it all. So as we continue this service, would our eyes and our ears be open to what you are saying, God? Jesus, we love you. We worship you. And everybody said, amen. Good morning, Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for joining us online on Christmas morning. Right now, we're gonna transition into a moment of giving. Will you prepare your hearts and your posture to bless this gift? God, we just thank you so much. We thank you for this community here that we have in Federal Way and beyond here at Grace Church. God, we just ask for you to move. Will you use us? Will you use these funds that we give back to you as an act of trust and obedience, God? Will you use them to do more than we could ever imagine? God, we give them to you with a full heart. God, we just pray for an amazing Christmas Sunday, Lord. We're so thankful for all that you're doing. In your name we pray, amen. Grace family and friends, Merry Christmas. We hope today is full of joy, peace, hope, and love as we get to celebrate today. We cannot believe it, but next week is already the new year. As a reminder, we will have only one service on New Year's Day at 11 a.m. We hope you will join us to start the new year. And we are so excited to invite you to be a part of our annual Revival 21. It's a special time where we join together in a time of prayer and fasting and as we kick off the new year and come together on Friday nights at 7 p.m. We hope you'll join us and see what God will do as we start our year intentionally focused on Jesus. Now let's get ready for today's special Christmas message. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. I hope you're having a wonderful Christmas morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, we're going to start this morning with today's reading of Luke chapter 2. And I asked my daughters, Jayla and Sylvia, to help me out with today's reading. Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no, there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their own flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that had happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying God and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Mm -hmm. Thank you, girls. You know, the story can feel so familiar to us that sometimes we lose the awe and wonder of it. Here's something that I'd love for you to do, whether it's today or sometime this week. I want you to reread this story, but don't do it alone. Bring somebody along. Read it out loud with somebody. Parents, read it out loud with your children. Allow your children to read it out loud with you. And I guarantee that as you listen to it one more time, you're going to be able to glean some new truths from this amazing story of Christmas. Now, the story, there's so much to unpack in this Christmas story. Let's just take a moment to think about that this is a grand moment in history where God was 
ushering in the arrival of his son, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, is making his grand entrance on earth. Now, if you've ever studied uh, any of the royal families in the world and you read about what they did for the birth of their children, you know that it was a pretty big deal. Now, usually the people that were allowed to be around the birth of the new king had to be somebody of great stature, somebody of importance. Usually it was these government officials were the only ones that were allowed in proximity to this new king's birth. Now, when they had the royal announcement, that was a big deal as well. It wasn't just given to the common people. It was actually something that only important people were able to learn about and be around and hear about. And then there was this big grand announcement that was for all people. And it's interesting that in this story, which at the time of Jesus, the first century Palestine person would have read this or heard this story, and they would have been shocked. They would have been amazed at the telling of the story, because for them, the, the awaited Messiah, that was a grand arrival. And yet, when they hear the story being read or shared with them, they were blown away by the fact that God, when he brought his son to this earth, only a few people knew about it. A couple who were far from home, this working class couple, were the only ones that knew that they were carrying and ushering in the Messiah, Jesus. Then what we see in the story is that when God was bringing his announcement forward to the world, he sent hosts of angels to fill up the night sky and they show up. And where do they show up? Do they show up to the religious uh, elite, the most important people in the city or in the town? No, to lowly shepherds watching their flock at night. What an amazing story. What, this right here would have been so much for people to lean in on and wonder what kind of God is this that he would send his son, that he would send this message, not to the people that were on the inside, but people that were on the outside, people that were on the fringes of society. We know that in this story, we see that the baby king did not sleep in a crib of luxury on his first night, but in a lonely manger. That it wasn't these important government dignitaries and officials that had the privilege to be able to be at the king's birth, but it was these lowly shepherds. Now, if you know anything about first century Palestine culture, you know that shepherds, they weren't viewed as respected or dignified people. No, they were considered as the lowly, the marginalized, the outcasts of society, yet it was this group of people that God sent his son's birth announcement to. These were the first messengers of God, the ones that he entrusted to share the arrival of his son. These were the messengers. So you might wonder, is there a message within the message of this grand story? Of course there was. And the grand message of it all was this. And I love the way the Apostle Paul framed it in the letter to the Philippians when he said this in Philippians chapter 2. He says, though he was God, who was that? Jesus. He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges and he took on the humble position of a slave of a servant, of someone of lowly stature. This speaks about the humility of Christ. And let me tell you, this was revolutionary at the time because no other God ever was portrayed as humble, as loving, and showing any vulnerability. But that's Jesus. That's the story of Jesus. Even in his birth, you see his humility and him coming to this world, not to be served, but to serve and to give his ransom for many. It says that he was born as a human, just like you and I. You know, the incarnation is so incredible to me. I'm still in awe of the fact that this mighty God chose to become like us, to come to the world like we do through the womb, and that he lived this life and learned all the things that we had to learn as a child, that he humbled himself to be dependent on other people to, to feed him and to take care of him. That's the life that Jesus lived. That's the God who came. That's the greatest message of all is that God came to be like us so that he could be with us. That's Emmanuel. And it says that he came in human form and he humbled himself in obedience to the Father, to God, to become like us, to be born and to be humble. Wow, what an amazing story. It says that he humbled himself unto death, to die a criminal's death on the cross. But we know the rest of the story. We know that later on in life, he did die a criminal 
or on a criminal's cross, but you also know that he rose on the third day to show the world that he had conquered death, sin, and the grave once and for all. Why? Because he loves us all. He did this for us. That's the great story of Christmas. That's what God wanted to send out through the shepherds, the message that the arrival of the king has come, the one that was going to come, the promised one, the Messiah, that he would turn all wrongs and make them right. That's the message of Christmas. That was the beginning of all things. God's gift to mankind of salvation through the son, Jesus, and it was given to all people. That's what I love about the sources is all people would have access to this salvation. Why? Because Jesus gave access to all. We see this in his story. That's why when he tells the shepherds, when the angels tell the shepherds, it says that this will be good news to who? To all people. That today in the city of David, a Savior has been born. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be the sign to you that you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. See, the King of Kings, the story of Christmas is that the King of Kings did not arrive in this grand palace where only some people had access to. No, he came in a lowly stable so that the outsiders had insider privilege. I love that about the story. The truth of the matter is, is that in our sin, we were all outsiders of God's grace and God's favor. And just like these shepherds, we were recipients of God's favor and his grace through the arrival of God's one and only son, Jesus. That's the good news of Christmas. So the big question that I want you to ponder today as we're taking time to celebrate this grand event on this earth is to think about what do we do with this message of Christmas? Because now we are given this Christmas message. And it didn't come to us in this grandiose angelic choir like the shepherds had. No, it actually comes through something better. It didn't light up the, we don't have the night sky lit up with all the glory of heaven, but we actually have the glory of heaven of the Holy Spirit illuminating in our hearts. We too are witnesses of this one that came in Jesus. And we have a greater message. Why? Because we have the complete message. Though those shepherds, they got so excited about what they heard that they knew that they had something to tell. But we have a greater message because we know that we're not looking forward to something. We actually have something that we can look back to and say, this happened. And because that happened, I know Jesus and he saved my life. We have a great message to give. And that's what we do with this message. Just like the shepherds, they had joy and they ran back into town. And they started telling everybody about Jesus, about what they saw and what they heard. And they believed with all their heart that he was the true Messiah. How do I know? Because the Bible says that they were so excited that they went back. And all the people that they heard, verse 18, were amazed at what the shepherds told them. Bethlehem had a celebration that night. You know, we don't know what happened next. We never know what happened to these shepherds. You know, I've always wondered, I thought, did they ever see Jesus come back to Bethlehem? Did they ever hear him preach? Did they ever see him do a miraculous sign? Did they ever witness the resurrection of Jesus? Now, I know that on this side of heaven, we may never know the answers to that question. But I am convinced that they believe that Jesus was the long-awaited king. Before he said any words, before he did anything miraculous, they were convinced that the baby born on that day, the one that they showed up to at that stable, they believed that he was destined to save the world. Now, can we be confident, just like these shepherds, that we have this truth, that the Jesus who came 2,000 years ago is that same one who was destined to save the world, and he did. And that's the newfound hope that we have. And that's the good news of Jesus. That's the good news of Christmas. So as we close this morning, I want us to think about what does Christmas teach us about this? See, on this side of Christmas, we know that the baby grew up and he fulfilled every promise and every expectation that God promised that he would do. And we know that the first Christmas, as spectacular as it was, we know that it was just the beginning. We know that our Lord didn't just come down from heaven, but we know that he brought heaven down to us. And that's the greatest news of it all. That's why the angels were saying that there would be peace on earth unto whom his favors rest. See, we understand this is that peace on earth is only possible through the person of Jesus. We understand this, that we carry this blessed hope inside of us and that the peace, the real peace can only be found in Jesus. And that's the true gift of Christmas. That's the message of Christmas. And the angels, they declare that all people need to hear this. All people need to know this. And so it is our job today to be messengers of that message, 
to tell others about what Jesus Christ has done. And so that's the question. That's what I want to leave us with is who needs to hear this message? Who in our lives needs to hear this message? Because we have it to carry. We have it to pass on. And so as you are getting ready to maybe meet some friends or some family today, or maybe this week you're reconnecting with people, I want you to think about who are some people in my life who have not heard this message, do not understand the great magnitude of that first Christmas. And you get the opportunity, just like these shepherds, to go tell somebody, to go share the joy. And like I said, we should walk with greater joy inside of us because we know Jesus. We know what he's done. We know that the story is complete. And so think about that as we close out. Think about who are the people that maybe this year I could share the truth of Jesus with. Maybe it's not today. Maybe it's this week or maybe it's this coming year that you would pray right now and say, God, give me the opportunity to share this message, to be a messenger for you. And if you could use shepherds, then you truly, surely you could share. You could use me. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for this great gift of Christmas. We thank you that you've allowed us, Lord God, to experience this truth in our own lives, that we're not just looking back at a story in history, God, but we see the truth lived out through our lives today. The salvation that we received, Lord, came because Jesus showed up 2,000 years ago. The arrival of the King that the shepherds witnessed, God, that is the baby that changes the world. And we are so thankful for the gift of Jesus, your one and only Son. So Lord, as you shared and entrusted us with this message, help us to have the courage and the boldness to share the message to others so that we could be your messengers on this earth, just like you sent out those shepherds on that first Christmas day. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this precious gift. Let it truly be the joy that we live with every single day, not just on Christmas, but every single day. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, church family. We love you. We're so thankful for you. Thank you for joining us, giving some time for some worship, and then just reflect on this Christmas message. Now we know that next week is New Year's Day and we are going to be in person and uh, we're going to have one service. It's 11 a.m. So I hope that you can join us. It's a great way to kick off the new year. God bless you. We love you and Merry Christmas.